Welcome to this presentation on the application of the free energy principle to estimation and control. My name is Henk Weimers and I'm with Chalmers University of Technology. This is joint work with Thijs van der Laar from TU Eindhoven and Archa Ochele Kale from Uppsala University. The motivation for this work lies in the area of stochastic optimal control. The picture on the right shows an agent which can act on its environment, infers the state of the environment through sensors and observations, and collects rewards. Using a control theoretic notation, we have the following ingredients. The state X, which can contain the state of the agent and the world, the control or action U, the observations Y, and finally the goals. A classic example is LQG, which stands for Linear Quadratic Gaussian Control. Here the agent has linear dynamics and a quadratic cost, quadratic in both the state and the control. LQG features a so-called separation principle, where the control assumes a point estimate of the state and ignores any uncertainty of the state. And on the other hand, the inference is done by a Kalman filter, which assumes known past controls. This decouples the control and inference problem. In more general contexts, inference can be solved through the belief propagation algorithm, of which the Kalman filter is a specific instance. In addition to this classic example, there exist more modern approaches, such as model predictive control and reinforcement learning. In model predictive control, we assume to have knowledge of a generative model of the agent dynamics as well as the observation model. The goals are encoded with a loss or objective function, and based on this, the model predictive controller solves an optimization problem to determine the current control action. On the other hand, reinforcement learning typically is model-free, so it does not have a generative model, and it builds value functions or policies. The goals of the agent are encoded via a reward signal. In this work, we will use a third way called active inference based on the reference below. Roughly speaking, active inference tries to minimize free energy or entropy. Or taking the quote from this paper, it acts to minimize surprise. Avoiding surprise is a fundamental for survival and speaks to the basic need of organisms to maintain equilibrium with their environment. The main question that we want to answer in this work is the following. Can we express stochastic optimal control in general and LQG control specifically as special cases of active inference? With this motivation in mind, this brings me to the outline of this presentation. First, I will provide some brief background on LQG and belief propagation. Then I will elaborate on different ways how belief propagation has been used for control problems. Then we move on to the main topic, which is the use of active inference for control and the relation to LQG. I will then show one example result and wrap up with conclusions. So let's first start with LQG and belief propagation. Let us start with LQG, Linear Quadratic Gaussian Control. I have taken this information on this slide from Wikipedia. The first box shows the evolution of the state as well as the observation model. The state at time i plus 1 is a linear function of the state at time i and the control perturbed by Gaussian noise. The observation at time i is a linear function of the state at time i plus independent Gaussian noise. So this is the linear part of the LQG. The quadratic part refers to the cost. The cost to be minimized is a quadratic function in the state and in the control. There's an expectation over all random variables. So basically we want our agent to stay close to zero and do this with as low control as possible. It turns out that this system can be solved in closed form, and the discrete time LQG controller is given by these equations. The first equation gives us the evolution of the state given the control. And this is basically the, the equation from the Kalman filter. The estimate of the state at time i, 
So here the hat refers to an estimate, depends on the previous estimate, the control, and a correction factor which depends on the current observation. Given an estimate of the state, we can then find the control via linear feedback. So we have a linear function that depends on the state estimate. Now in these expressions there are several matrices and these can be found from the so-called Riccati equations. Solving the Riccati equations provides the matrices needed to find the discrete time LQG controller. The figure on the right visualizes the LQG controller. So we have a Kalman filter which takes into account the um, control input, the observation, generates a state estimate, then there's a multiplication with minus k, which yields the control. The control is applied to the plant, or the, the system, and then this generates via a sensor a new observation, which again is fed to the Kalman filter. We now move on to belief propagation. In belief propagation, we consider distributions over multiple variables, such as here, p of x1, x2, and x3. We assume that this distribution can be factorized as follows. So there's a normalization constant, 1 over z, and then three factors, fa, fb, and fc, where each factor contains a subset of the arguments of the original distribution. From this factorization, we can draw a factor graph. In this factor graph, each vertex or each node corresponds to a fa factor, and each edge or line corresponds to a variable. So for instance, a corresponds to fa, x1 corresponds to the variable x1. We see that a only connects to x1, so this means that fa has only one variable, namely x1. But x1 connects to a and b. This is because x1 appears in fa and fb. With this factor graph, we can run the belief propagation algorithm. This is a message passing algorithm over the factor graph. The messages we pass are functions of the associated variables. So again, we here have the factor graph and it will now pass messages from the, this, from the edges of the factor graph inward. So we first compute a message from A to X1, which we denote by mu from FA to X1, evaluated in the value X1. And this message or this function is just given by the original function fa of x1. At the same time, we can compute the message from x3 to c, so mu from x3 to fc, evaluated in the value x3, and we just set this to 1. Now, given these two messages, we can compute messages from fb to x2 and fc to x2. Both are functions of the variable x2. The message from fb to x2 evaluated in the value x2 is given by the function fb multiplied by the incoming messages, so that's the message from a to x1, and then we integrate out all the variables except x2. Similarly, the message from fc to x2 is the function fc, which depends on x2 and x3, multiplied by the incoming message, which we've computed in the previous time step, and that we integrate out over everything except x3. Finally, we can compute these messages from fb to x1 and from fc to x3, following the same rules. After this third time step, on each edge we have two messages, one from left to right and one from right to left. Given these messages, we can compute so-called beliefs. The belief of x1, the belief of x2, and the belief of x3. And these are simply the marginals of the original distribution. So p of x1 is obtained by taking the original distribution and integrating out everything except x1. And this belief, which is equal to the marginal, is given by the product of the two messages. The message from left to right, from a to x1, and the message from right to left, from b to x1. The same holds for x2 and x3. And this provides a systematic and efficient way to infer hidden variables. It can be shown that these beliefs are exact when the graph has no cycles. When the factor graph has cycles or loops, the beliefs are only approximations. Belief propagation has many applications, including the Kalman filter, the particle filter, decoding of error correcting codes and image processing, to name but a few. 
We now focus on the relation between belief propagation and free energy minimization, because in active inference, we also minimize a type of free energy. To reveal this connection, let's express the joint distribution P of X in a slightly different way. So here X refers to the vector of all the variables. So X can be a very high dimensional variable. We write P of X as one over Z, and Z is a normalization constant, and then a product over functions. So product A over possibly many functions FA, where each FA takes as argument XA, where XA is a subset of the original X. We now introduce a new notation E of X, defined as the sum of the logarithm of the individual FA's. With this new notation E of X, we can express P of X as one over Z times the exponential of minus E of X. Here E of X can be interpreted as a kind of energy. So E of X tells us the energy of a certain configuration X. The distribution P of X will have most of its mass in low energy configurations hence and free energy minimization. The normalization constant Z can in principle be found by solving this integral. Okay, now with this in mind, let us now try to formulate a new optimization problem. So we want to minimize with respect to Q. So here Q is the set of distributions, the divergence between Q and P, and P is the original distribution. By plugging in the definition of the kullback leibler divergence, we can express the divergence as an expected energy minus an entropy minus log of z. Okay. So the kullback leibler divergence has an average energy, an entropy, and then finally log of z, which is called the log partition function. The first two terms are called the beta free energy. Since we want to minimize the divergence, we try to find a Q that minimizes the average, free ener the average energy and at the same time has high entropy. So it's as broad as possible while minimizing the average energy. Now this is an optimization problem, so we can in principle form formulate the Lagrangian and solve this optimization problem. And it turns out, and this was shown in reference to, that solving for Q of X, given some structure on Q of X, leads to the belief propagation message passing rules. So this has this consequence that when you're doing belief propagation, you're actually solving a beta free energy minimization problem, namely this one. With this background in mind, we can now move on to the relation between belief propagation and control. Let us assume that we have a generative model and we want to infer hidden states. So what we can do is we can determine the joint distribution of the states and the observations given the controls. Due to the Markov assumption, this distribution factorizes as the prior times the dynamic model and the observation likelihood. Let's further assume that our control objective is quadratic in the state and quadratic in the control. Now, at time t, our factor graph will look something like this. We have a part of the factor graph that relates to the past, where we have the past controls, which are known because we've already decided them, and also the observations up to time t, which are also known because our sensor has observed them. And then we have the future. So this here contrails, contains the future controls, which we do not know, and the future observations, which have not been observed yet. The factor graph related to the past contains the states up to time t, the factor graph of the future contains the states from time t onward. What connects them here is the state at time t. Now on the factor graph related to the past, the one in green, we can run belief propagation. And based on this belief propagation, we can find marginals or beliefs. And these are of the form, for instance, of the distribution of the state at some time t prior to the current time t and including time t given the observations up to time t and all the past controls. So this can be found by just simply running belief propagation on this left side. So to be a little bit more specific, in the past we have messages with known controls and known observations. 
So here are some arrows that re represent these messages. And let us focus on some of these at time t. So the message here labeled A turns out to be the prediction. So this is the distribution of the state at time t given the observations in the past, so before time t and also the past controls. So this is what we know about the state at time t before observing the measurement yt. The message B is the likelihood, so this depends on the observation. And then the message C, which connects the past and the future, is the update. So this is the distribution of the state at time t given all the measurements, including yt, and the past controls. And this update, of course, following the message passing rules, is the product of the likelihood function and the prediction. And these messages may seem very familiar to you because they are just the standard equations used in the Kalman filter and the particle filter. Particle filter. Now, for the future, even though we have this factor graph, it is meaningless to do belief propagation. The reason is that the control objective, CT, is not encoded anywhere in this factor graph, so there's no way to determine reasonable controls. The way this problem has been addressed in the literature is by encoding the control objective directly in the factor graph. So here again is our control stage cost, which is quadratic in the state and quadratic in the control. So what paper number one proposes is to create an artificial prior on future controls. And this prior is proportional to an exponential negative the control cost. So what this means, for instance, when h is very large, is that our generative model tells us that we will end up in states with low control. Similarly, to deal with the stage costs related to the state, we introduce artificial known observations and an associated likelihood function, which is proportional to exponential negative state cost. So again, when R is very large, this tells us that our generative model brings us to states where X is small. We also remove future observations because those are not known. This then brings us to the following factorization. Of the states from time zero to time capital T, observations up to time little t, because future observations are removed, the controls from time one to time capital T, and then the artificial future observations from time t plus one to time, time capital T. We express this using the standard Markov model as a part related to the past with the prior, the state dynamics and the observation model. And then a part related to the, to the future where we again have the, stage, the state dynamics. We have the prior over future controls and the likelihood function related to future states. Here we show again the factor graph from the previous slide, where the green part relates to the past, the red part relates to the future, and x of t con connects the past with the future. Recall again in this graph, the future controls and the future observations are unknown. We now replace this part of the future with this factor graph on the right, corresponding to the factorization above. So what we did is for each control, we added a prior on the control, of the form described above. For each state in the future, we add a likelihood function with an as associated artificial observation equal to one. Now we also removed all the future observations yt. So now x and u are unknown and z is known. But this is sufficient for us to run the belief propagation algorithm. So we can do forward message passing where we start from the updated belief of xt given all observations up to time little t and all controls up to time t minus one. We pass messages to the future. We pass messages from the future to the current time ut. Now we have two messages on this edge ut and we can compute the belief. So following the belief propagation rule, the belief ut provides us the belief over the next control action. We can then take the mode of this belief and implement that action and then go through the entire process again. Now it was shown that by doing this, we find modified Riccati equations for the LQG problem. So when we specialize this scenario above to the linear state dynamics, linear observation model and quadratic control, 
we find something that's close to LQG, but not quite. A similar idea was proposed in reference to for state-dependent costs. It was proposed to add additional factors in the factor graph related to the state cost with a regularizer lambda. And this lambda could be tuned to uh, obtain desired behavior. We are now prepared to discuss the relation between active inference and LQG. Recall that in active inference, we're always trying to minimize free energy. And this leads us to our main idea. Similar to the previous papers, we will consider the future controls as hidden and their states to be inferred. Secondly, we will merge the control cost in the free energy objective. Different from before, but without any loss of generality, we will use a rolling horizon, where at time t, time little t, we will have a horizon from the current time up to capital T time steps ahead. So now we introduce our notation, y under bar are the observations up to time little t, y over bar are the observations over a horizon of size capital T, so from time t plus 1 to time t plus capital T. Similarly, the states under bar, x under bar represents the states up to time little t, x over bar represents the future states, u under bar represents the controls up to time t minus 1, u over bar represents the future controls, including the control ut that we want to infer. We will then define a new generative model at time t, denoted by pt. This model depends on all the observations, all the hidden states, all the future controls, but is conditioned on the past controls. We factorize this distribution into three parts, a normalization constant, the system model, which was the old generative model from early on in this presentation, in which everything was conditioned on all of the controls, times a goal prior. And this goal prior depends on the future states, the future observations, and the future controls. Note that some variables, such as xt, appear in the goal prior and in the system model. This is fine, because the normalization constant z will make sure that the entire distribution is well-defined and normalized. Let us look at the shape of the proposed goal prior. Similar to the previous papers, we consider it to be an exponential minus lambda times the cost over the horizon. This cost, as you may recall, is quadratic in the state and in the control. The parameter minus lambda will create different behaviors. If lambda is very large, this means that our goal prior is very concentrated around zero, zero in the control and zero in the state. If lambda is very small, meaning close to zero, this means that the goal prior is very flat in the state and control space. With this generative model, we can now define a free energy objective at time t. This free energy objective involves a kullback leibler divergence where p of t is a generative model, which is given, and q is a distribution which we would like to determine. By plugging in the definition of the kullback leibler divergence, as well as the definition of the generative model, we can break down this free energy into two parts, one part v of t, which depends on the past, and one part g of t, which depends on the future. The part g of t also contains the goal priors, which relate to the future. We show in the paper that the first time is minimized by a Kalman filter and the second term is minimized by message passing backward in the factor graph. The beliefs can then be found by running message passing on the corresponding factor graph with the goal priors. And these beliefs found by message passing will then also minimize the free energy objective. The principle outlined here is called generalized free energy. There's also a concept called expected free energy, but this is different and will lead to different controllers. The entire factor graph is shown here. In green, again, we have the past. In red and orange, we have the future, and what connects them is the state at time t. The factor graph corresponding to the past is exactly the same as it was before, and it is conditioned on all past controls. The, the, the factor graph has its variables y and x under bar. So they are the past observations and the past states. The graph on the right corresponds to the future. 
we see that there are these orange vertices in the graph and they correspond to the factorized goal prior. Recall that the goal prior is the exponential of a sum, so this becomes a product of the exponentials. For each future state, we have a goal prior. For each future control, we have a goal prior. We also have goal priors for future observations, but these are set to uniform distributions. We can now run message passing on this factor graph. The messages on the factor graph are visualized here. Let us focus on some of these messages. The message A from XT going from left to right is the Kalman filter output after the update. So this is just a standard Kalman filter running from left to right. The messages B and C regarding future states, they are backward messages in the factor graph, which accounts for future goals. So this depends on the goal priors and future times. Now the messages E and D. The message E downward accounts for the goal prior of the control at time t. And the message D upward accounts both for the output of the Kalman filter A and the future goals C and B. We can then multiply the messages E and D, and this provides us the belief of the control at time t, which we are interested in. We can then apply the mode of this belief to the system and shift our time horizon with one step and apply the same principle again. The question now arises, what can we prove about the relationship between active inference as proposed in the previous slide and LQG? In the paper, we prove the following two statements. Under a deterministic generative model, active inference solves the stochastic optimal control problem. So here, the state dynamics and the observation model are fully deterministic. Secondly, even when the generative model is not deterministic, but lambda becomes very small, but positive, then also active inference solves the underlying stochastic optimal control problem. To make this specific for LQG, we find the following expressions for the controller with the gain of the controller, as well as the additional matrices that are also used in the Riccati equations. Different from the standard Riccati equations, we have lambda in many of these expressions. But again, it is possible to show that when either condition one or two holds, then the lambda cancels out in all these expressions and we recover exactly the LQG Riccati equations. So it is easy to verify that under condition one or two, the controller becomes exactly the LQG controller. Let us show some results to verify our claims. This slide shows the performance of the LQG and active inference controller for a time window of 10 steps. Each of the four figures has on the x-axis time and on the y-axis different quantities of interest. On the bottom left, we have the control magnitude, which we would like to be small. We have the state magnitude, which we would also like to be small. On the bottom right, we have the accumulated control cost. And on the top right, we have a measure of the free energy. In each of the figures, we show three curves. The LQG is in blue. In red is the active inference controller with lambda equal to one. And in green is the active inference controller with lambda equal to 0 0.1. We observe that the LQG controller applies large controls in the beginning to bring the magnitude of the state close to zero and then applies small corrections. In contrast, the active inference controller with lambda equal to one is very sluggish and applies only very small controls leading to slow decrease of the state magnitude as a function of time. The active inference controller with a small lambda equal to 0 0.1 behaves very close to the LQG controller. This can also be seen in the bottom right showing the accumulated cost, where LQG and the active inference with lambda equal to 0.1 achieve similar accumulated cost, while the active inference controller with a large lambda leads to a large accumulated cost. So these results confirm that for small lambda, the active inference controller recovers LQG. So it is interesting to see that larger lambda leads to less aggressive control, with lower free energy but higher cost. And this result is somewhat counterintuitive. One would expect that a larger lambda would lead to more aggressive control, bringing the state and the control magnitude close to zero quickly. 
Recall that with a large lambda, we will have a very concentrated goal prior around the target value of zero. The interpretation of this is as follows. If your model tells you that you will anyway end up where you want, so this means with large lambda, your model tells you that you will have a control and a state close to zero, then there is no need to work hard to get there. So there is no need to apply large controls to reach your goal because you think you will get there anyway. So this was a counterintuitive but interesting result. This now leads us finally to our conclusions. Active inference is a flexible and general framework that can be applied to stochastic control. And it has classical LQG as a special case provided we define the free energy objective appropriately. Active inference automatically deals for different kinds of uncertainty, including in the generative model itself. The variational formulation is also good because it allows us to include various kinds of objectives and constraints. Also, it does not presume any separation principle as in LQG. It naturally emerges. Overall, active inference is a rich and emerging area with lots of open research problems for the control signal processing and statistics community. With this, I would like to thank you for your time and your attention and your interest in our research.